Would you like a treat? Nice granny bag, little Jack. It's not a granny bag. It is a magic nanny bag. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things only adults notice in Puss in Boots' The Last Wish. <laughs> I am Puss in Boots, loved by one and all. Anyone in particular? I mean, uh, how could I possibly choose? For this list, we'll be looking at references, jokes, and themes from this animated feature that might be lost on children, but will resonate with adults. This entails a few spoilers, so look out. Did you catch any details in The Last Wish? Share them in the comments. Number 10, Shrek References. It's been over a decade since the first Puss in Boots movie and the last Shrek film. For many kids in the audience, this may be their first exposure to the fairy tale franchise. Welcome to my fiesta! Make yourselves at home! The callbacks to past movies will likely resonate more with their parents, who were, bizarrely, youngsters when the original Shrek came out in 2001. The cameos from Jinji and Pinocchio aren't hard to miss. The same goes for the ending, teasing a return to Far, Far Away. Where are we headed anyways? Off to find new adventures and to see some old friends. Sneakier cameos include a witch minion from Shrek Forever After and Puss's surrogate mother Imelda. In another blink-and-you'll-miss-it reference, Shrek, Donkey, and Puss recreate a moment from The Lion King. With death on his trail, Puss can no longer live by Hakuna Matata. My prescription? No more adventures for you. You need to retire. Me? Retire? Are you the village comedian as well? Number 9. Goldie's Geriatric Line Some kids don't know the meaning of the word retirement. As for adults getting up there, some welcome the idea of moving to a senior living community while others dread the notion of winding up in a retirement home. I am no lab cat, doctor. I am Pussy Boots. Not anymore. Puss is among the latter, falling into a depressing routine when he reluctantly goes to live with Mama Luna and her countless other cats. Puss's life is devoid of excitement until Goldilocks and the three bears come and knock in. Hello, missus. We're looking for a cat. This cat. We've got an offer for him. Mama Bear picks out Puss in Boots among the legion of cats, although Goldie has a hard time believing that the geriatric cat before her is the dashing feline on the poster. Kids might not be familiar with such an advanced word, but Granny and Grandpa sure are. Pickles? You're Puss in Boots? Not yet, but I will be. Number 8. The Ethical Bug's Familiar Voice like Pinocchio's talking cricket, the ethical bug serves as the angel on Big Jack Horner's shoulder. This Boy Scout bug has his work cut out for him, though, finding that even the most dedicated conscience can't redeem the horrible Horner. Well, you know what they say, can't bake a pie without losing a dozen men. <laughs> oh, oh, that was horrible. Your wish is horrible. You're horrible. You're an irredeemable the Ethical Bug is voiced by Kevin McCann, a DreamWorks production supervisor. Although this is McCann's first acting credit, adults may recognize the voice that he puts on. He sounds an awful lot like acting legend Jimmy Stewart, who was known for playing the ethical everyman. Do you know how long it takes a working man to save $5,000? Just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. Well, is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Somewhat similar to Jack's dynamic with the ethical bug, Stewart's George Bailey had a guardian angel in It's a Wonderful Life. The ethical bug's voice also calls to mind comedian Don Knotts, who defined childhood for many young boomers. There's good and all people. There's good and all people. Well, you know, Jack, maybe we need to dig a little deeper. Calling pop culture superfans everywhere. Do you love to argue with WatchMojo's top 10 ranks? Introducing WatchMojo's first and very own party game. Bring your superpowers to the table and fight for your pick to be at the top of the list. It's all the fun of the comment section, but in real life. Number 7. A Mature Voice Cast For a lot of kids, The Last Wish will be their introduction to certain actors who the adults are already acquainted with, including Olivia Colman as Mama Bear and Ray Winston as Papa Bear. Just give us the map. And throw in a dozen points. Eh? Ooh, 
know what? Have you got any savoury pies? What? Yeah, what flavours you got? No. Can we get all of that in a bag to go? Andrew has issues on Big Mouth, but hopefully he turns out better than John Mulaney's Jack Horner. As intimidating as Wagner Mora's portrayal of Pablo Escobar in Narcos was, his wolf might be even more terrifying. I just love the smell of fear. Kids may know Florence Pugh from the MCU, but definitely not Midsommar. Speaking of which, Midsommar is often compared to 1973's The Wicker Man, which got an infinitely memeable remake starring a bear-suited Nicolas Cage. When Baby Bear, played by Samson Keo, is attacked by bees, the last wish filmmakers couldn't resist referencing an infamous Cage line. No, baby, wait! <laughs> Number 6. The Logan of DreamWorks sequels. You read these in your spare time? Oh yeah, Charles, we got ourselves an X-Men fan. Along with the Deadpool films, Logan is one X-Men spin-off that you're not gonna let the kids watch for a few years. Adults who can get into R-rated movies without being carded have noticed a surprising parallel between The Last Wish and Wolverine's sort of last stand. Both center on legendary heroes with sharp weapons who've repeatedly cheated death. Jeez, Wolverine seeing you like this just breaks my damn heart. As soon as I rip it out of your chest. As they become older and grow out their beards, they set out on a road trip against a hazardous western backdrop with a couple of companions and several antagonists on their trail. It all builds to a gritty final battle where the aging hero faces a seemingly unbeatable foe, forcing him to accept his mortality. Thankfully, Puss's brush with death isn't nearly as bloody as Logan's. Live your life, Puss in Boots. Live it well. Number 5. Big Jack Horner's Casual Murdering The Last Wish has a surprisingly high body count. We're not just talking about Puss's eight lost lives. Most of the casualties come courtesy of Big Jack Horner. Aren't you gonna help him, Jack? You're losing a lot of men. I'm not really stressing about the manpower. I've got a bottomless bag of magic weapons. These babies are gonna get me that wish even after the whole team is dead and gone. In addition to turning one of his hired hands into gold, Jack is responsible for the Baker's Dozen's doom. Whether sending them into a valley of man-eating flowers, turning them into confetti with his bad aim, or letting them fall after using them to build a bridge, Jack possesses no regard for human or animal life. You, 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 you're not gonna shoot a puppy, are you, Jack? Yeah, in the face, why? Kids can tell that Jack is a bad guy, but only adults can fathom just how messed up and psychotic his actions are. At least he's given an appropriate demise in the spirit of Terminator 2. You know, another kid-friendly flick. What did I do to deserve this? I mean, what specifically? Number 4. Dingleberries The sibling rivalry between Goldilocks and Baby Bear boils over as the two begin swapping insults. You're not even a bear! Zing! <laughs> I'm more of a bear than you are. She got you! You're nothing but a low-rent Cinderella. Oh! Well, that's rich coming from you, baby. Because you know what you are. Wait for it. Goldilocks gets the better of her adoptive brother, calling him, among other things, a dingleberry. Kids won't know this word's meaning offhand. To be fair, adults probably won't either, but they can look it up. Merriam-Webster provides a couple of definitions, including, quote, a foolish, stupid, or contemptible person. There's also the slang version, which means, quote, a piece of dried fecal matter clinging to the hair around the, let's say, where the sun don't shine. I haven't got dingleberries. No, you do. You do have them. Based on the way Baby takes offense, we think the more graphic definition applies in this case. We also wouldn't be surprised if dingleberry is code for, well, something that Baby might be compensating for. Oi! You shut up, you little mutt, or I'll cut you from pooper to snooter! <gasps> Number 3. What Did Kitty Smell? In addition to Dingleberry, The Last Wish will teach the kitties words like hell and crap, earning that P in PG. Don't worry, parents, the words you really don't want your kids repeating at Sunday school and synagogue are mostly bleeped. You're all a bunch of knuckle-dragging, honey-scrounging, grub oafish munching mangy nugget and your snooter! <laughs> Who knew that Harvey Guillen's Perito had such a vast vocabulary? 
The bleep button is almost needed again when Perito encourages Puss and Kitty to stop and smell the roses. Take your time and really appreciate what's right in front of you. Kitty struggles to smell the roses, but she picks up on the scent of bull, and that's where she gets cut off. This is stupid. All I smell is bull sh The little ones will wonder how Kitty was going to finish that sentence, and their parents aren't cluing them in. We'd say the word, but YouTube's also pretty PG these days. No matter how hard they try, I always find them. So one day, they get creative. Number two, the portrayal of anxiety. Swearing and violence might contribute to the PG rating, but that's not what makes The Last Wish such an adult film. It's how the filmmakers explore mature themes like anxiety that make it just as much for grown-up viewers. Puss! What's wrong? <sighs> you wouldn't expect Puss in Boots of all characters to shine a spotlight on mental health. However, as the hairs raise on Puss's arms and he clutches his racing heart, the film provides a surprisingly authentic depiction of panic attacks and PTSD. The film also touches upon how anxiety is linked to depression, preventing people from seizing the day. I I'm supposed to be a fearless hero, a legend, but without lives to spare, I am nothing. The Last Wish should be essential viewing for children developing signs of anxiety, helping them to understand these emotions and see that they aren't alone. I am afraid. Well, it's okay to be afraid. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Bedside manner, a term that the kids can use the next time they go to the pediatrician. Death comes for us all. Treat? You really got to work on your bedside manner. Kitty's therapy line. To be fair, everyone in this movie could use therapy. Who is this guy? I'm Puss's best friend. No, he isn't. And his therapy dog. Definitely not. Finally, you need therapy. Heaviest cream equals heaviest booze. Puss loses more lives drinking like that. Last call, senor Boots. Another glass of cream. Make it your heaviest. Oh, I keep the heavy stuff in the back. Number one, meditations on death. Most kids go about their days with little regard or understanding of death. Even adults can act as if they're invincible, in denial that eventually their card will be punched. It might happen suddenly during an accident or shortly after the doctor shares some bad news. Either way, death comes for us all, including those with nine lives. And how many times have you died already? Uh, uh I don't know. I never counted. I am not really a math guy. The Last Wish tackles this inevitable truth with wisdom. It's only natural to fear death as Puss does. Puss learns that you can't beat death, but you can come to terms with it. He's able to peacefully part with the wolf, accepting that one day they'll meet again. Si, sí, hasta la muerte. Although the film doesn't sugarcoat this bleak concept, it ultimately encourages kids and adults to live their best life. I hate to say it, but should we make a wish? Kitty, one life spent with you is all that I could wish for. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.